Hey fam, Medico Sil here. I'm here with Dr. Albi and Ro, who is a student nurse also on YouTube. We're going to be answering some pretty important questions today with respect to why choose nursing or a medical degree. If you're interested in healthcare, then this is a really important video for you. Uh, some of the questions we're going to be answering are things like, why did we choose our degrees? What's a normal day in the life of a medical or a nursing student? So if that sounds good to you, then stay tuned. <laughs> So um, nursing definitely wasn't my first choice when I was thinking about the career options straight out of high school. Um, I an originally entered into a psychology degree and thought I was going to become a psychologist, but at the end of that, quickly realized that that wasn't for me. So I looked at other options, particularly in healthcare, because I really like healthcare and um, just health in general. So I considered medicine at one stage, but then um, found nursing and I have loved it ever since. So, um, Syl, I really wanted to know why you got into medicine. Uh, okay, well, in year seven, I was um, very cocky and annoying, which has totally changed. Uh, and I wanted to learn all the different bones in the body to show off to my friends. Uh, so I just started learning all the different bones, and I quickly found uh, this guy called Dr. Gunther von Hagen, who did autopsies on TV. And I just thought it was the coolest thing. Like, he would skin these cadavers you know, to, for educational purposes, but as a young student, like as, a, as a young chap, I just thought it was sweet. And then um, it just kind of followed from there that like medicine looked like a really nice degree. Um, I didn't get in a couple times, so I did take a year off to rethink my life. Uh, and I'll talk about that in another video. But uh, it always kind of seemed like it was a good use of my life. So it always, I always came back to medicine as yeah. my ideal um, kind of career direction. So um, I guess we should talk about the different ways that uh, a year 12 or year 11 student can go in. But before we do, if you're liking this video and you care about healthcare, then I hope that it earns your subscription. All right, so consider subscribing. There are lots of different pathways to get into nursing. Um, and first of all, I probably want to distinguish between two different types of nurses. So you have what's called an enrolled nurse or an EN, and you also have a registered nurse or an RN. So I'm studying to become an RN or a registered nurse. And that pathway typically takes a lot longer than um, it does to become an EN. Usually an EN, uh, you go through like a diploma of nursing and you can do that through TAFE. Yeah, it is a, a shorter pathway to get into um, a degree where you're hands-on with, with patients and are able to to start working um, in a nursing role. But for the role of a registered nurse there are um, a couple of different pathways. So you have an undergraduate degree that you do which is a three-year degree and, and you can do that straight out of high school. Um, I mean you can go back and do an undergraduate degree if you're a little bit older anyway as well. Um, but it is yeah if you're looking at going straight into university you can go straight into nursing as an undergraduate. So that's one option and the other option is something that I'm doing which is a fast track course and that is a postgraduate degree so I've done a degree previously an undergraduate degree and then now I've decided to go into nursing and instead of the three years it's it's two years instead what, what are the main differences between an EN and an RN in mm -hmm. terms of the daily job the biggest difference, I think, is um, just some of the clinical skills that you're able to do um, under the registration. So both EN and RN, you still have to be registered under APRA and the Nursing and Midwifery Board of Australia. But um, for example, I think in for ENs, you can't administer certain medications that are um, like restricted medications and things like that. Whereas an RN is someone that is able to do that. So, and that's why the degree for RNs is a little bit longer as well, because you do have further training for some of those clinical skills that you don't do as an EN. Cool, so if I'm in year 12 and I just want to get a job as quick as possible, but I really like the idea of being a healthcare pr practitioner, mm -hmm. uh, EN is the kind of fast track way. You yeah. can't do as much, but you're still helpful yeah. and you can help with the day-to-day -day activities yeah. but if you want to be kind of more of a manager in the kind of 
on the ward, then maybe an RN is a better direct, uh, direction to yeah. take because you can also go to a uh, nurse unit manager. There's like yeah. a pretty... Lots of different things that you can get into. Even as an EN, you can go back and, and become an RN as well if you want to continue your, your study. Right. Um, so if you are uh, looking at getting straight into to a, like a program where you can start working pretty soon, an EN is a great option because you can still get all of those clinical skills that um, start with the basics of nursing. And if you then want to continue your degree um, or your studies later, you can become an RN and keep going. With medicine, there's actually only one type of degree and it's an MD. There is another name for it where it's like MBBS, you know, there's not much difference. And there's essentially two entry pathways. There's the undergraduate entry pathway six years, which I can attest it's a very long time. Some undergrad pl places are actually five years. Maybe I think maybe University of Newcastle is a five year undergrad program. Places like UNSW where I study is six years. But if you do a Bachelor of something else, it could be literally anything. It could be a Bachelor of Nursing, it could be a Bachelor of you know, Arts with any kind of major, Sociology, whatever. You can then do Postgraduate Medicine, uh, which is essentially a four-year program. I think most universities are moving towards that direction in the future. They prefer postgraduate students because often postgraduate students have a bit more life experience, they know how to connect with people because they've done you know, interesting, weird and wonderful degrees and have travelled etc. It's not a bad thing to take a gap year by the way, if you're thinking about it, do it. I took a gap year and everyone was like, don't take a gap year, you might not want to do medicine when you come back. And then I was like, well then that's a very good reason to not do medicine if like me travelling makes me not want to do it. Anyway. Sorry for another time. Hey guys, Medico Sil from the future here. Uh, sorry, my answer was a bit complicated in the video, so I'm just gonna simplify it here. So the two ways to get into medicine and their requirements. The undergrad way, you have three requirements for the undergrad way. Your ATAR, which is uh, the HSC at the end of year 12. There's the UCAT, which is this separate type of exam, and I'll make a video about that in the future, but look it up. And then the third thing is the interview, and there are different types of interview. There's the multiple mini session interviews. Um, the one that I had at UNSW was actually just a bit of a chat. They asked me about what books I was reading. Uh, they asked me why I wanted to do medicine and not a, be a dentist. Um, fun fact, teeth are the only part of your skeleton that you clean every day. But anyway, uh, yeah, so there's interviews. Now with the postgrad, instead of using the ATAR, they use your GPA, which is the average of your marks at university. Um, and all this is a bit more nuanced than I'm explaining it now, but I'm just trying to keep it simple for this video. Um, they use your GPA, you, you don't do the UCAT, you do the GAMSAT, okay, which has a bit more of a science focus than the UCAT. Um, it's a big day, I've done both the UCAT and the GAMSAT, I did the UCAT a couple of times. By the way, I got 43 on my first UCAT and then I got like 50 on my second. Um, and only on the third time did I actually get a good score and get into medicine. So do not give up, okay? If I had given up after getting 43, I'd never gotten into medicine, so you're not allowed to give up. Um, Anyway, that's a side note. So you use a GAMSAT, which I've also done uh, to get into the graduate pathway. And then they also have an interview for graduate uh, medicine. Now, uh, different universities, different kind of nuances. You have to look up each university and which ones you're interested in going to and look at their specific requirements. With that in mind, I'll take you back to the interview with Rowanna Jane. Woo! For me, I had to do an interview to get into my master's of nursing. Oh. Um, but the interview process was a group interview um, and we had like an ethical dilemma and we had to basically discuss within the group how we would solve this ethical dilemma. Um, and I think the premise of that was just to see how we communicate with everyone um, and also listen to other people who might have different opinions so it's an interesting process to hear about like the, the interviews was this I, I I've never done a group interview and I'm mm. kind of scared of it but was there someone in your group that was like the dominator yes um, was it you it was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was someone like that but um, I I think I, I was very aware of the fact that they were looking at how we communicated with other people so I did try to um, listen a lot and um, take in what other people were saying and also try and uh, think about what they were saying to see if it would change my mind about things as well um, at the, the same time yeah yeah look the fact that you got in shows that you don't have to be the dominator to do yeah. well in these interviews you definitely don't need yeah. to and to be honest I think if you are kind of um, dominating the conversation it's, yeah. it shows that you're not listening to other people anyway so okay so the next question is kind of like what the day of a medical or a nursing student looks like 
Mm -hmm. So Rana, do you yeah. want to answer that? Yeah, so um, when it comes to studying nursing, there, I guess it depends on what degree you're in and if you're doing full-time or part-time. But for me, I spend about 20 contact hours at university per week. Um, and then I will typically study 20 to 40 hours sometimes um, at home, outside of those, those hours, trying to make sure that I get all of the work done. So um, typical day if I'm studying at uni, it might be that I'm going into uh, university for a lecture and tutorial. Um, or online at the moment because of COVID uh, and then maybe spending some time studying in my own time or, or doing assessments um, or yeah or working on assignments and things like that um, but we also do clinical placements so as part of the degree we have to do at least for, for registered nurses we have to do 840 hours I think of, of clinical placements so if we are on a, a clinical placement we basically go into the hospital for two weeks straight and we do every day um, weekdays um, what are the hours? The hours, so um, it's eight and a half shift, eight and a half hour shifts um, that we do every day for two weeks, and they, yeah, half an hour break in between is in the middle. Um, so it's essentially eight hours of work every day. That's one thing that nurses do get breaks. Yeah. The, the, the culture around breaks is so good. That's yeah, and and it's it's really good that they've brought that in because if. It's really hard if you're looking after a patient for eight hours a day. And you four can, patients sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four patients that are, are, are very difficult, even more sometimes. Right. Um, oh. And if it's a stressful day and you've got a lot on and you don't have that break, it, it can have, like, it can end up having poor decision making for everyone involved. So um, I think breaks are really important. Yeah. Just like fatigue yeah. is such yeah. a dangerous fatigue. thing in healthcare. Yeah. Uh, but that's a video for another time. Isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, typically um, either at uni or on clinical placements or like me at the moment, I'm on a couple of weeks break. So, yeah. Nice, are you? Yes. Oh, yeah. very nice. In between semesters. Very good. Is, um, Medicine, it depends where you are in the degree. Mm -hmm. Since it's basically a decade of your life, not really, but feels like it. Um, it's actually got different phases and all the degrees will have different phases, but there'll be slight nuance differences between each of them. Mm -hmm. uh, basically the way it works is there's the kind of at university, basic sciences, physiology, anatomy, biochemistry, pathology, blah, 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 ologies. You learn all the ologies and that's all textbook learning. That's with, you know, the old professor at the front of the room who's making terrible jokes. Uh, and that's usually the first half of the degree. And usually peppered through that, you'll have little um, time at the hospital. You'll just get to talk to a patient every now and then. At the moment, things are a bit different, obviously, but that will restart soon. But then you'll transition to the clinical half of the degree. And that's really just full time with a, um, with a team. And the, I think if you're like not sure about healthcare, a really, really cool thing about both of our degrees is you see the job you're going for yeah. in the degree. Think of all the arts students mm -hmm. and all the commerce students, 90% of all uni students that are doing degrees mm -hmm. and they don't actually know what the job is like. Like you can do a full Bachelor of Arts mm -hmm. and then go into government and never have even seen what that would be like. And you're applying for a job you actually don't even know that much about. It's bewildering. We spend years in the job we're going to go in. So if we see that like all the doctors we're talking to are miserable and hate their jobs, which they're not, I'm just saying, if you see that, or if you can just see the kind of conversations that they're having, you know that, oh, I actually like that kind of team dynamic. I like the personalities. I like yeah. the problems that they're thinking about in the day-to-day -day activity. I'm on urology at the moment. I'll put, put a card to my a day in the life of a urology student. Uh, and basically I start with them at 7 a.m. in the morning and I'll go till probably about 2 p.m. and then I'll leave and I can study here in the afternoon. Um, and things that you might do is, you know, you do, you do a ward round with them. So you go to every patient on their list and you learn about the daily challenges. Maybe one of them's been bleeding overnight and you need to address that. Maybe one of them has an infection. So you're trying to check if the infection's getting better, blah, blah, blah. You take bloods, which is, um, you know, pretty challenging, but fun once you get the hang of it. And very rewarding, if, especially when people have tough veins and you get it, you're like, yeah. Um, you eventually become a bit of a vampire and you start wanting to take bloods. Um, <laughs> Uh, you're like, even if a patient doesn't need it, I've been like, that patient has great veins. Are you sure they don't need bloods? Uh, but no, uh, you shouldn't. And you might put catheters into penises and um, your Nurses interest. can do that too. Nurses well, are much so. better than students. This is the big um, issue in urology is that <laughs> nurses will do catheters first mm -hmm. and only when they're hard will like escalate it to the doctors. Yeah. 
which means the doctors actually don't do as many catheters at all, <laughs> but just get the hard ones and <laughs> anyway. Yeah. A paradox. If you actually, you know, a hot tip when you get to your clinical placements and you want to practice doing things, you need to talk to the nursing staff to be like, hey, if there's any bloods or any catheters or whatever, mm. let me know. I and feel like um, nurses are actually, um, they kind of take medical students under their wing, which I've seen in the hospital and yeah. nursing students as well. I think nurses are just so um, dedicated to teaching people, which is really nice. Not all nurses, um, but yeah. the majority of nurses are just... Spot on. Yeah. You're doing it like a lot of... A lot of healthcare practitioners mm -hmm. are essentially doing good things. It's one of the best jobs because you the ethics are sorted. It's very rare that you have like a pretty fair paying job that is just always kind of ethical. You're always trying to help. You might not always help, okay? Complications <laughs> happen, but you're always yeah. trying to help. And to get paid for trying to help is mm -hmm. a wonderful and rare thing. So yeah, you do the catheters, you do the bloods, you make some phone calls, etc. What are, what are the typical things you might do in kind of clinical skills-ish yeah. type things? What yeah. would a nursing student or nurse do? So as a nursing student, you do a lot of um, the jobs that nurses do, especially in your final year, because that's kind of you basically getting prepared to become a nurse. So um, some of the jobs that we do is um, we do a lot of patient care. So getting patients up and, and about if they need to go um, to the bathroom or to have a shower in the morning. We do a lot of that. Um, so it's, it's a lot of hands on patient care and, and holistic care, but also things like doing medications. So um, making sure all of the medications are given on time, understanding um, if a patient's going for surgery, for example, knowing which medication, which medications you can't give if, if they're going for surgery or something like that. Um, um, so it's not just like ticking boxes. So mm. like I was um, on placement in the ICU and, and we had someone going up for a cath lab and, and they were intubated. So having to make sure that all of the different like portable, intu um, portable um, what do you call it? Instruments. <laughs> In yeah, everything was all the able to be portable. Yeah, you had um, the IV pole was attached to the bed rather than just wheeling behind it. Like things like that that um, you wouldn't have thought of sometimes. And, and that's kind of like where nurses come in is to, to make sure that everything runs smoothly. So um, yeah, it, and I think it also depends on which area of nursing you're in. Like if, if you're in a ward setting, you're probably doing a lot more patient cares for, for patients that are kind of acutely unwell. Um, but if you're in like a, a GP clinic or in the community, um, you could be doing things like wound dressings, um, more chronic care stuff. So it's, it's That's a really different. good point. Yeah. And so when you apply for nursing or medicine, mm -hmm. there's not one job at the end of it. It's a huge yeah. variety of jobs and a lot of nurses don't even work clinically. They might work in research and do clinical trials organization yeah. or management. Or government or policy. Government making. policy, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So in, in medicine, you might go to public health, which is a really important and underfilled field. Mm -hmm. So the world's <laughs> your oyster. All right, thanks so much, guys. That's all we had time for uh, today. Unfortunately, my camera ran out of battery, so I have to film this outro um, afterwards. So Rowan has gone home. We had heaps of fun filming that. If you guys have any other questions or you know other ideas of videos that might be good for a student doctor and a student nurse to do together, please comment below. Do not hesitate. I'll read all the comments and respond to all of them. I hope that this video earned your subscription once again, so please consider subscribing. Hit the like button if you enjoyed and have an absolutely lovely day. We'll see you in the next video.